Hey, YouTube, what's going on? Sam, back at you again. Um, this story is um, a very sad story, and it's coming out of Ohio. And um, big shout out to um, all my family and friends that are in Ohio. I have family that lives in Cleveland. Um, I have a couple of people that I went to Virginia State University with um, in Shaker Heights, um, Ohio. So big shout out to you all. And I know it's cold as the well diggers um, uh, kahunas right now. So I hope that y'all staying warm. Uh, and, 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 and if you ain't got to go outside, don't go outside. Because if I ain't got to go outside and this brick out there, oh girl, not going. I'm just not going to do it. But anyway, this story, um, <sighs> let me tell you something. People don't have a problem with, with taking other people's lives. It's not your life to take. God giving you life is God's to take. And, and that's it. End of story. But anyway, I'm going to read this story and I'm going to give my thoughts and, your, and opinions as I go through this story. Ex-judge who br brutally assaulted his wife in 2014 is arrested after she's found dead. <sighs> A former Ohio judge and state lawmaker who went to prison for brutally assaulting his wife in 2014, was taken into custody after she was found dead, authorities said. The ex-judge Lance Mason was hired as Cleveland's minority business administrator after being released from prison, but was fired Saturday when he was arrested. So wait a minute. Let me back this up. Not only did this man get arrested in 2014 for brutally assaulting his wife, but he was hired as Cleveland's minority business administrator after being released from prison. So he went to prison, came out, and still got a job, if not a better job, than being a judge. But anyway, let's continue. Details of the death of Mason's estranged wife, Aisha Fraser, weren't immediately available. But police in Shaker Heights, Ohio, said that in the statement that it was a terrible tragedy. It also wasn't clear what charges Mason may face. Um, murder? First degree murder? I don't understand. See, sometimes you have to be really, you have to pick apart what the editor is saying in the newspaper because a lot of times, to me, what's happening is the fact that they will say certain things. And you also have to listen to key words when they are telling these stories because some, some of these key words is like, okay, let's try to make it look as good or as possible. Let's try to make it look as bad as possible. Whenever you see something strange and you see some words or whatever, and it's just like, wait a minute, why would they say that? You better pay attention. Let's continue. It also wasn't clear what charges Mason may face. The Shaker Heights Police Department, which said in a brief statement that Mason was taken into custody after an initial investigation, did not immediately respond for, um, to a request for comment. According to the court documents, Mason, who also served as a state represent re representative and state senator, got into an argument with Frazier on, on August the 2nd, 2014, while returning from a relative's funeral. Lord have mercy. With their, with their six-year-old and four-year-old children in the vehicle. Mason repeatedly struck Frazier in the head, bit her face, and slammed her head against the dashboard, armrest, and passenger window, the document said. So let me say something about this little maggot piece of shit right here. And I don't give a damn what y'all tell him. I don't give a damn if he see it. Anytime you're willing to put your hand on a woman, period, you dead ass wrong, you're a punk, you're a coward, you're a sack of shit. Not to mention the fact you did it in front of your kids. So not only do you not respect your wife, you don't even respect your kids enough to even say, let me be a man. Let me hold my composure and let me do this because at no time should a man put his hands on a woman. If you get that mad with somebody that you got to put your hands on them, it's time for somebody to pack their shit and roll out. Bottom line in the story, ain't no cut cards to it. But this dude going to do this in front of his children and going to do it to his wife. Hold on from, and she's a very beautiful lady. I'm going to let y'all see the picture. And you know what? Listen, I'm still not tech savvy to whereas I know how to add pictures to my YouTube videos. So I'm still working. And if y'all know somebody who can help me out, please send me an email or send me some kind of link 
And you can say, well, you can go on the YouTube videos and find out. Let me tell you something. They do that. They snap through that stuff so fast. A lot of times you got to look at the video two or three times in order to catch on. And then you got to understand the way they did their videos a couple years ago. They don't change the features on YouTube now. So you certain things that you can't do that you could do a couple years ago. But anyway, let's continue. I'm going to show you a picture of this lady. She's a very beautiful lady, has a very beautiful smile. And from her picture, you can just see that she was a, I mean, I don't know. It's just something with this picture. It's like her spirit just jumps out. It's like she's a good person. She just dealt with a sorry ass knucklehead. So I'm going to show you a picture of, of, of Miss Frazier. If you can see it, this is her. She's a very beautiful lady, beautiful smile, very beautiful lady. But anyway, let's continue. And then he bit her. How you bite her and, she, and you driving? But anyway, let's continue. Try, after trying to escape, Frazier fell to the ground, where Mason continued to strike her, the document says, adding that he then got back into the video and drove away, leaving Frazier there. So not only that, this maggot piece of shit left her on the side of the damn road. And he left with the kids in the car. Frazier filed for divorce. But court records show that process that the process wasn't finalized. <sighs> Mason was sentenced to 24 months behind bars, which that is a felony. Anything that's a year and a day is a felony. If it's a year, it's a misdemeanor. If it's a year and a day, it is a felony. So he spent two years in jail. Mason was sentenced to 24 months behind bars for this assault and served nine. So he only served nine months. See, let me tell you something about the court system that pisses me off. If you're going to give somebody two years, why are you going to turn around and say, well, we're going to cut that time in half and we're going to give you nine months? That's why he was able to get that job because he didn't serve a year. He only served nine months. Let's continue. According to the document where WKYC, he was indefinitely suspended from practicing law according to court documents. The station reported last year that Representative Mar Marcia Fudge uh, of Ohio may have helped Mason secure his job at Cleveland's Minority Business Administrator. You see what I'm saying? Now, you got this representative that can help this judge get this job that he did not deserve, knowing that he is a, a, an abuser. Let's continue. Though the congresswoman denied the report, saying she didn't urge Mayor Frank Jackson to hire him. Let me tell y'all something. When you're dealing with this kind of elite circle, when you got senators, representatives, and all these politicians involved, trust me, they are all rubbing each other's back. You rub my back, I rub yours. You want your palms greased? Guess what? I need to put some grease in mine so I can grease your palms. It's just like you put lotion in your hand and you got too much. So what you do, you go and put it on somebody else's hands and so take some of this lotion. I got too much on. You see what I'm saying? I hope that I hope somebody kind of understood that analogy a little bit. But it, but it's like I said, she she's denying it because see he done killed his wife, so she gonna deny. She she wants to take her hands off of it now. But trust and believe, she has something to do with this man getting this job. I can guarantee you. Let's continue. The mayor spoke, spokesman, Dan, Dan Williams, also denied the claim. See, let me tell y'all something. It's a lot more to the story than what people is saying. Because I guarantee you, they all helped this man get this job, knowing that that man was sentenced to two years but only served nine months for domestic assault. Listen, let's continue. Williams did not respond to a request for comment about Mason's reported firing, but WKYC reported that that Jackson sent his deepest con condolences to the family of Miss Aisha Frazier, especially to her children. Frazier had been a teacher for, for two decades, 20 years, and taught sixth grade at a local elementary school at the time of her death. The station reported in a statement with WKYC, an uncle said she would be missed by all, adding, heaven just got a magnificent angel. Tim Stello um, reported um, this story. But see, let me tell y'all something else, too. And I've been saying this a thousand times, and I'm going to keep saying it until somebody finally catch the hell on. 
It's not a stranger that will hurt you. It's somebody that you love, somebody that you know, a family member, or, or whoever. Because when you are around people that you know and family members, you have a tendency to let your guards down because you know them. That's family. You don't expect them to hurt you. But in this case right here, not only was this man abusive to this woman and, and, and him doing that in front of his kids, that wasn't the first time he did that. Because I'm going to tell you why he did it too easy. In the car, in front of the kids, he'd been beating her in front of them kids and, and he was beating her before them kids came along and she was beating her after them kids came. So for him to do that in front of the kids, that was normal. And then he left her on side the road. Man, come on. Man, come on. If that dude don't get no time in jail, you can best believe the family need to sue. Her 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 parents or her family need to sue. They need to do something because she did not deserve that. She did not deserve that. No one deserves to be abused, whether it's a man, woman, child, elderly, whatever. No one deserves to be abused. No matter what somebody say, whatever, it does not justify you hitting them in the mouth and beating them up. Eat. Now, if somebody spit on you, that's a whole different thing. I just think that is like the worst disrespect ever, other than somebody, you know, being mean to you and, and just being totally abusive to you. Um, but I pray that they lock him up for the rest of his life. They put him in a cell with somebody named Bubba. And in a, a, a big old husky somebody that's named Eugene that's going to be all on that ass. But anyway, it's like I said, it's not a stranger that will hurt you. Most of the time, it is somebody that you know. Most of the time, it is somebody that you either once loved or you love that will do you in. It is always somebody that you love or somebody that you once loved. That will do you in because they know your ins and outs to a degree or most of it. They know that you are comfortable around them and you would never suspect that. But at the same time, this woman lost her life because she was dealing with a sorry ass joker. And this fucker had the nerve to be a judge. You understand that? So that's what I'm saying. It doesn't matter what your position is, whether it's political or whether you're a regular Joe Blow out here at a hot dog stand, or whether you're working in a damn assembly line, or whether you're a doctor, lawyer, it don't matter. Abuse has no title in regards to what you do in your work. If you are abusive, you are abusive. you just an asshole. But anyway, that's all I got. Y'all share it. If, if you like that video, hit the like button, and definitely share this video with somebody that you know that is going through a domestic violence and let them know that, come on, this don't have to be your end. You don't have to die to love somebody. And if you got somebody that is willing to be abusive to you and they have hurt you, they have drawn blood from you, they have done all kinds of stuff for you, death is the next step. It is. You ain't got to believe me. You look and go online and see how many people have died due to Due to domestic violence. And I promise you, you'll be like, wait a minute. No, that ain't gonna happen to me. He'll never do that to me, baby. You keep on fucking around with these sorry ass dudes. I'm telling you right now, you I will be talking about you on the Truth Be Told show. I promise you, it, it, it ain't the matter of if it's gonna happen, it's the matter of when. But I'm gonna tell y'all right now, please, if you know somebody that's in a domestic violence situation, whether it's a man or a woman, and trust and believe, men get abused. Just as much as women do, but men don't talk about it because you got other men that will shame them. Oh, man, how you let that woman beat up on you like that? Because you got some men that don't believe in violence. You got some men that don't believe in putting their hands on women. That's how they were raised. That's how they were taught. Why would they apologize for that? But anyway, it's like I said, y'all got to share this video. And if you in a domestic violence situation, you with somebody, whether it's emotional mental, physical, get out, get out, get out, because I'm telling you, it does not get better. It never gets better. It gets worse over time. And I pray to God that they don't have a habit of drinking or they don't have a habit of 
going out here doing these hard drugs, these crystal meth, this crack cocaine, this cocaine powder, this hair on, or whatever the case may be. Don't once they start being abusive, if they start um being doing drugs and all the other stuff to go along with that, let me tell you something. The next step is death. Because they don't stop abusing you until you dead. As long as you are alive and they have the way to get to you, that little piece of paper that the court give you, whatever, you got a court order, same number of piece of paper. You can rip that up. You can burn that. You can do whatever you can do. That piece of paper ain't stopping that person from coming through that door. That piece of paper ain't stopping that person from firing a gun at you. That piece of paper ain't stopping nothing. So if you are in a domestic violent relationship, whether you're man, woman, boy, girl, if you are in that relationship, tell somebody. I'm telling you, tell somebody so that they can get you some help. That's all I got. Let me tell y'all something. If you don't love nobody else, you got to love yourself. You have to love yourself to know when to leave. Because if you don't, you won't leave. Or you will leave in a body bag. Or you will leave on a stretcher. I'm telling you, do not stay in a relationship that is not healthy. You know if you're in a healthy relationship. You know when you're in a good relationship. You, you know when you're dealing with somebody and they constantly downing you, critiquing you, always saying something negative, always saying something crazy, jacked up to you, leave. And if you can say, well, I ain't got no money I can't leave. I ain't got no money. I can't do this. Let me tell you something. When I left my, when I left Virginia Beach on Christmas Day, I had zero dollars. I had enough gas in my car to get to my mother's house. I know once I got to my mother's house, I was safe. But to drive from Virginia Beach to my mom's house was like a three and a half, almost a four hour drive. And I'm going to tell you right now, that was the best decision I ever made was leaving on Christmas Day. And I never looked back. Granted, he tried to give me, he tried to give me a house key to come back. I know I messed up. I'm doing it. I said, I can't give you another chance to, to hurt me no more. Not only did you lie to me, but you cheat on me. And then you got the nerve to beat, beat me up because you wrong. You out here doing dirt. You are here while I got not only my child here, but I got... Your three kids here that I'm looking after, I'm helping with homework. I'm making sure they're clothes washed. I'm making sure they're doing what they need to do. But you are in the street. You are there doing your dirt. You are there drinking and doing drugs. And you are here messing around with other females. And then you got the nerd to want to come home and accuse me of cheating. And then you got the nerd to want to put your hands on me. I love me. I love me, and I'm going to tell you right now, I prayed to God. I said, God, if you get me out of this right here, I promise you, I won't ever put my daughter or put myself in that situation ever again. And by the grace of God, I have I have not been in another crazy relationship like that because when you are a woman who have gone through a domestic violent relationship, when you're dealing with someone, you know, because it's something that spidey sense is going to tingle on your neck. And you're going to get, your body's going to feel like a, it's going to almost, the only way I can describe it is what happened to me. You're going to get a flush feeling. It's just like, it's like all your color or all, your, everything is just like, whoosh, and you know. And let me tell you something, when you know what you know, when you know, can't nobody dispute that. Can't nobody tell you nothing different. So I'm telling you ladies, I'm telling you men, don't let that wood. Don't let that coochie be your driving force to stay with a man. Don't ever, or stay with a woman. Don't ever get in your mind, well, I ain't got no money to leave. Let me tell you something. If you got gas in your car and you can and you can pack you a bag, you ain't got to pack up the whole house. Sometimes it's good. When I left, I left all that furniture. I ain't give a damn about that furniture. You give me my clothes. You give me my drapes off the window. Yes, I said my drapes. You give me my drapes off my window, and you give me my clothes. I don't give a damn about that furniture. I don't care about that big flat screen TV. I don't care about none of that shit in the kitchen. I don't care about none of that stuff in the bedroom. I don't care about none of that. You can have it all. You can trash it. You can do what you want to do with it. You can shove it up your ass as far as I give a damn. But I'm out. You can have all of that stuff, 
but you can't have old girl. You can't have me. That's not going to happen. You, it's not going to happen. You have to be willing to make a clean break. You have to be willing to say, damn. And you can't say, oh, my God, I miss him so much. You don't miss him because you don't know how he was going to be from one day to the next. You didn't know if he come home from work, he was going to be pissed off, ready to put his hands on you or what, whatever the case may be. You had to play it by ear and whatever, however the wind blew him in, either you got to blow with that wind because if you try to go against that wind, I promise you it's going to be a, it's going to be a problem. But anyway, that's all I got. Y'all hit this like button. If you like the video, share this video with anybody that you know that is going through an abusive relationship or have been in an abusive relationship or they dealing with some knucklehead that's saying, you ain't going to never leave me. You ain't going to never find another man or another woman like me. And like, I pray to God, I don't. So um, that's all I got. And um, I'm out and y'all stay safe and don't ever let anyone take your voice. Don't ever let any one take your voice and definitely don't let them take your power because the moment they take your power and your voice you as a person that you may know cease to exist peace out gone